Barnowski here with a video for Acoustic Guitar Magazine. And today we're going to be looking at six different flat picking solos. Um, the tabs for these are in the most recent version of Acoustic Guitar Magazine. You can find a link below this video that'll take you right there. Um, this article also has a background about what flat picking is, uh, some of the great players. And my favorite part about the article is the... Um, uh, 20 essential flat picking records. Um, I put that together of some of the records that I think are the best as an introduction to get into this. Um, so some good listening material for you there too. Um, but yeah, in this video, we're just going to go over these six different examples. I'll play through them so you can hear what they sound like. And I'll give a few little pointers along the way as well. Uh, the first one is Sally Gooden from Clarence White. This is example one in the tabs. It's the same tune I was just playing to start off the video. I'm going to go through it now um, as it appears exactly in the tablature uh, at 100 BPM. I'll play this with a metronome so you have this um, so you have this reference point as well. So here we go. This is example one, um, capo two. <laughs> So there it is, um, Sally Gooden. A few little things to think about as you work through this. Um, the intro, the this little thing here, um, that is called taters. It is a way of kicking off a song. It's the same kind of deal as if you were to count into it. If you're gonna go one, two, three, and go into the song. Same kind of deal. Um, it's just a way to let the folks you're known, the, uh, the folks you're playing with, to let them know the tempo and when to come in. Same deal as when you count into a song. You would only do this once. So it appears at the very beginning of example one, and then you see the repeats where that's the actual tune, Sally Gooden. Um, so yeah, you can uh, find a video of Clarence White playing this. This transcription comes from a uh, workshop he did, a televised workshop from 1973. Um, and you can go to YouTube and you can watch the whole workshop. You can watch him play through it. They played through it very fast. It's around 130 and I played this at 100. Um, you may need to slow this video down and that's fine. You can find, um, you know, in the settings in YouTube, you can slow it down as you're playing it back. So you can learn it at a slower speed. Um, so there you go. There's uh, Clarence White's Sally Gooden. For the next one, example two, we're going to look at Larry Sparks' version of Faded Love. This is capo three. So, uh, gotta move your capo there. And this is in drop D tuning. So we gotta um, take that low E string and bring it down to a D. There we go. Um, I'll go ahead and play through this at 90. So there it is, um, Faded Love from Larry Sparks. Um, one of the things that I really love about this is that Larry Sparks is using mostly just the low strings, the low three strings to play the melody, and he's using almost entirely downstrokes. Um, 
I'm just going off the record, but based on what I hear, that's what it sounds like. And this is a very old school way of playing. Um, and I think it's just kind of, des it describes Larry Sparks' playing in general, not just for the song. He just uses lots of downstrokes. Um, so for example, the opening, just check this out and look at the right hand and you can see these are all mostly downstrokes. <laughs> So um, as you're playing through this, give that a shot and see how that feels. Um, and uh, just kind of notice how this is very bluesy. Larry Sparks is a very bluesy player, and he's using a lot of these kind of major minor uh, slides and hammer-ons and stuff. So uh, look for that as you're playing through this as well. Um, so there it is, example two it, from Larry Sparks. And now we got to get out of drop D. So just gonna do that real quick. All right, there we go. And uh, for example three now, we're gonna be looking at Doc Watson. This is Doc's uh, Greenville Trestle High. This is his solo from the song. Um, Doc plays this out of C shape at capo five. Um, so this puts us in the key of F. Doc very often when he flat picks uses this C shape and he'll use the capo to kind of get in the key that he needs to to fit his voice. Um, so if you want to get that uh, Doc flat picking sound, a lot of times you want to go for this C shape. But anyway, here we go. This is uh, 90 BPM, example three. One, two, three. version of Greenville Trestle High um, and uh, this is just like quintessential Doc Watson picking it's such a good song on an amazing record the album is Riding That Midnight Train came out in the mid 80s which is kind of later in Doc's career but it is a fantastic album um, and I just love this solo I love how there are little distinct phrases that follow the melody um, and there's just some good licks like the uh, <laughs> That's just such a good lick. That appears in um, starting in measure eight. And there's just a lot of good stuff in here. Um, so uh, really tasty doc solo on this one. Uh, the next one, example four, we're going to go down to capo two. This is Tony Rice's uh, version of Nine Pound Hammer. This is off of his 1978, I think, record Manzanita. Um, which also appears, uh, I think it, this also appears on the top 20 records list that I put together in this article as well. And this is just like a quintessential Tony Rice solo. Just gonna set up the metronome here, putting it at 100. We're at capo two for this one. Example four, if you're looking at the tab. And this is uh, Tony's version of Nine Pound Hammer, his solo for Nine Pound Hammer. Here we go, 100 BPM. One, two, three. So there it is, Tony's version of the Nine Pound Hammer. Um, this is quintessential Tony Rice because it includes just some, a lot of licks that he would use, a lot of different phrasing that he would use. Also, it starts low in the open position, goes high, then comes back down, which is uh, something Tony Rice would do very often. Um, in order to make this solo sound its best, you have to have good pull-off technique. Um, a lot of folks, when they do pull-offs, they think of it as just simply lifting your finger off the string. So if you're going to like do a pull-off from the first fret here on the fourth string to open, a lot of folks would just lift off the string, right? And that maybe works okay on electric guitar, but you really lose that note on an acoustic when you're flat picking. So what you want to do here is take your index finger and you're going to pull it like you're um, plucking the string just with your left finger. Um, 
Just kind of like that. That's the idea. And now when you actually play the note, you get a really good, strong pull off. And you can do this on any finger when you're doing a pull off. You know, do that. You can do that same kind of grabbing thing. Or you can do it even if you're not pulling off to an open string. Like that. So just a little mini comment as you're working through this, you're gonna get a much better sound if you're able to do this on this on the solo. So just for example. Yeah, you just get better pull-off sound that way. Um, yeah, and there's tons of pull-offs at the very end. That's a pretty that's a pretty awesome little ending there. Um, but yeah, you definitely need good pull-off technique to make this one fly. Um, so there you go, Tony Rice's version of Nine Pound Hammer. Now we're going to look at Molly Tuttle's version of um, Cold Rain and Snow. This is Cape of Three now. This comes from a live performance that is on YouTube that you can find. So if you search Cold Rain and Snow, Molly Tuttle, it should come right up. It's from E-Town is the name of the cha channel that this is on. And um, I'll go ahead and play through this now. I'm bringing it down to 60. So this is a bit slower. Um, Molly Tuttle's Cold Rain and Snow. Uh, there is a lot of tricky stuff going on here. Um, this is a really tough tune to play. Uh, one, so we can just go, there's three things in particular that I want to go through, and I'll just go through them kind of in order. Um, the first one is just the opening. You might be tempted to start with an upstroke. Kind of like that. Um, but the way Molly Tuttle plays it, and the way most flat pickers would do this, is to start with a downstroke. It might feel unnatural. Try both of them. The downstroke to start probably feels unnatural, but the reason why it's preferred is because downstrokes naturally sound heavier and more powerful. Um, so it's good to line up downstrokes with downbeats. It's the idea behind what's called alternating picking in flat picking. Um, downstrokes on downbeats. So we start on this downbeat, and then when we get to this, we get a really strong, powerful downbeat on the first full measure of the tune. Um, so it just sets you up for a really good sound. Um, so the uh, there's actually two more things. One other thing to look at is this, like this section here. This is in measure five. And what's going on there is it is kind of like a, I, I guess I'd call it a reverse rake. You're um, essentially just dragging your pick across three strings, but you're going in this direction. So that's the idea. I'm just on the B string, G string, and then D string. And you're just dragging your pick that way. Um, and then you can, the actual notes fretted here is like that. And then you just add in a little slide at the end. And that, that's, that's what's going on here in measure five. All right. The last little thing, some of, this might be easy for some of you, it's pretty tricky for me, is the use of the thumb in the last line. So um, we have it here. Um, so there's this kind of G5 shape. Um, G5, that's the, name, that's the name of the chord. It's a G chord without the B note. And the thumb comes around and hits that bass note. It's a really great sound. Um, it might be easy for you if you've got bigger hands, bigger longer thumbs, something like that. It's kind of tough for me to do. Um, and then it happens again in the very last, me very last measure. The thumb comes around here on that F, and then there's a hammer on on the second fret, or on the third fret with your second finger. So that's what's going on there um, in uh, Cold Rain and Snow. Okay, and that brings us to the last flat picking solo that we're gonna look at. 
this is um, Billy Strings' version of Red Daisy. It is a uh, monster solo. I love it. This is the version that he played on Jimmy Kimmel Live, performing this song. You can also find it on YouTube. It's national TV, so the audio is fantastic. The video is fantastic. And the performance of this song from Billy Strings and his band is just so good. Um, this is also on his record called Renewal. The solo there is very similar. So if you want to learn that solo, this is a good place to start. Um, but just to be clear, I, this does come from the, uh, the Jimmy Kimmel video. Um, but anyway, I'll go ahead and play through it so you get a sense of how this goes. And I've got a few little comments here to wrap up. Um, 100 BPM, and this is capo 4. Capo 4 out of the G shape, which puts us in the key of B for this song. Alright, so here we go, 100 BPM. Um, Billy Strings' version of Red Daisy. Um, what I love about this solo is it combines elements of a lot of different types of players. Um, this is very much Billy Strings playing it, but I feel like he is pulling influences from certain places. So there's a... That is straight up Doc Watson to me. That sounds like something Doc has done on lots of different recordings. So this is... Um, this comes up in measure... I think it's measure four? Uh... Yeah, yeah, measure four here. Um, and it's this cross picking leg. Um, and then that flows right into what sounds to me like a very Tony Rice style lick. It's actually really similar to what we just saw in Nine Pound Hammer. Great little lick there. Um, after that, we get into measure, this looks like measure 15 here. And those are all going to be downstrokes because those are all in down beats, right? Um, all downstrokes, and that is kind of like Larry Sparks downstrokes, right? Um, and then that flows into this um, repeated G note, and that is a lot like um, kind of like Don Reno or George Shuffler style. When we haven't been able to talk about them in the video, so go to that article. You can learn a little bit more about those players as well um so this solo from billy strings is a great way to kind of wrap up and um you know do a little overview on all the different types of things we were talking about um so have fun with this hope this video is helpful any comments questions would love to hear from you drop it below or find my info and send me an email um and uh we can talk about it a little bit more so uh have fun good luck i'll see you next time